Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thousands of memories are created and captured in each photo taken on your magical vacation. We proudly present Capturing Magic, where we help those moments live on forever. Hey everyone, welcome to Capturing Magic. I'm Steph from CapturingMagic.me and TheDailyDigi.com. I'm here with my co-host, Brittany Lovett, who can be found at BritishDesigns.com, where she creates digital scrapbook supplies. Hey, Britt. Hey. And I'm also here, or we are here, with our guest, Heather Winfield, who can be found at her character site, I Love Characters, and it is heatherw.com forward slash character. How are you doing, Heather? I'm good. I'm just getting back from Disney, so it's, you know, that little sadness and yeah. tiredness wrapped up. <laughs> Coming down. It's always yep. hard. Reentry yeah. is difficult. It yep. is, and we, uh, I didn't think I was going to do as much walking this trip, but it ended up being just as bad so we we walked like over 70 miles oh my goodness, <laughs> goodness. kind of tired yeah and, and uh on sunday it was close to 15 miles i In think so day. that's that's the one that kind of did the most yeah do you take yeah. a pedometer with you yeah i do it just oh, cool. i'm always curious though and and i think my pedometer's off so it's even more than that but yeah i've always wanted to do that i just have never done it yeah, I just thought I, it would be so interesting. <laughs> yeah, I used to have a, an up band is what it's called. They just uh, upgraded their up band, I guess, and you can find it online if you just Google up band. And I had one that I took to the parks with me and to Disneyland. And when I was using it and checking it, I was doing 13 miles a day at Disneyland. Oh, mm, goodness. Typically, yeah. I just bought a Fitbit, though. So the, oh, I wanted to get that. Yeah. yeah. I, I meant to get that before my last trip and then still this trip I didn't. So you like it? I haven't used it yet. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> That's why I haven't used it as a pick or anything yet because I got to try it out and see what I think about it. But I've heard of a lot of people that have used them and really like them. I know a lot of people that have used them and like them. So What is it? It's a little – it looks like a teeny tiny – pager, I guess. Well, not even – it works like a pager. It clips on like a pager. But it's mm -hmm. super small. It's about two inches tall and then maybe an inch, half inch wide. And you can just clip it onto you anywhere. And it, it measures your activity levels. And it also will measure your sleep, like it, how much um, deep sleep you're getting, how much REM sleep you're getting, and all of that kind of stuff. Oh. Yeah. So you just wear it with you all the time? Mm-hmm. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I'm excited to try it out. And that's what my up band did, too. It would measure sleep, which was really interesting to do. So... Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. Okay, let's – we have some news items that we we're going to talk about. Oh, before we do that, Heather, share with us, when you go to the parks, who do you usually go to the parks with? Well, I usually go with my mom or I strip out with a friend so, or myself. So, yeah. A little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. And you're typically at Disney World m more often, but you do Disneyland as well. Yeah, I did Disneyland in December, and I'm going back in August for the expo. Yeah. So, and then my, as I have the premiere pass, so that expires in September. So I don't know when I'll be back to Disneyland after that. But uh, sad, yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. But I'm, I'm really getting my money out of this pass. Good. <laughs> Dress Good. Is like That's. I need to fit in at least one or two more trips to Disney World before mine expires in December, and then I'll feel like I've really got every nickel and dime out of it that I possibly could <laughs> and then some awesome. so yeah okay we have some news items that have happened this past week that have to do with capturing and creating magic memories at Disney we don't usually talk about news items unless it's directly directly related to documenting and creating memories at Disney so the first one that we have is that PhotoPass is launching at Paris Oh, I'm, yeah, yeah sorry. I saw that. That link, that details in our notes is a little bit wrong. In Disneyland Paris, yeah, PhotoPass is launching. That's pretty exciting. Cool. Yeah. And then also the Disney Memory HD app that I've talked about before on the show that is fun to use where you can kind of add characters to photos or hats and other uh -huh. fun things. It's now available on Android. Oh. So that was released this past week as well. Cool. Yeah. And then 
We have, let's see, the new Disney app called Story launched on May 8th. And I did a post about it that we can link up to in our show notes at capturingmagic.me. They they launched it and announced it on the night of the 7th, I think. And I was able, I just caught it and was able to do a post on it. But I ended up using the HD, the Memory HD app and the Story app together, which was super fun. So the Story app basically is where you can combine photos and video of anything. It doesn't have to be Disney related. And then it makes kind of a scrapbook, but it has the video in there and it's more interactive. You can also add titles and you can drag and drop your photos around. You select the photos that you want and the video that you want. It has to be under a minute. The video does. And then it just plops them in there for you in in chronological order. And then you can drag and drop, reorder things, add text, all of that kind of fun stuff. So I saw they had a ad for that on the bus. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, for the story app. Already. Yeah. Seems like they're marketing it pretty hard. <laughs> it does. <laughs> like, I don't know if it, I have, I mean, I didn't see anything on buses, but I saw it just, I feel like virally it's been everywhere. I've seen it everywhere. It has well, you know, been on the everywhere. Disney bus, when you're inside, they have the little, yeah. you know, posters ads or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Usually they're, they're really behind, but that was right on top thought, of it. Oh, that looks new. And, Cool. Yeah, they are marketing it pretty hard. And, you know, D- Disney Social Media Moms Conference was yeah. down in Disney World during the time when they launched it. And they did a big thing down there for it, too. And I think that's probably why we're seeing so much of it is because it's all over Twitter with the social, the media, social moms media moms that were attending that event. Yeah, that are, that were tweeting about it as they talked sense. about it. Yeah, because normally we don't really I, the Disney Memories app. I never heard anything about until this past week when they announced on the blog that it was available. And when they announced it on the blog, they said that it was available in Android and iPhone, but it's been available on iPhone for a super long time. So. Yeah. Well, I hadn't even heard of it till you picked it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They weren't doing much promoting of it at, at all, but this story app, they really have gone, they yeah. had it hard with this one. I it's wonder, cool, it is really cool. And I wonder if they're going to introduce the social aspect of it. Kind of like Instagram. Mm, cool. Yeah, it would be cool if they did that, I think. Where mm-hmm. you could, because you can share links of your video. You can, you can create this, I don't even know what to go, the story, the I guess. The story. Yeah. yeah. You create your story and then you can share it via Facebook or a direct link to their site. So then you can email it to people and then they click on the link and go to their story site. And then once you're in there, it like I emailed my own to myself because I was just trying to play with it and figure it out. If you email it to yourself or to other people, then there's you click on the link. And once you're in the story dot, uh, dot us site, then you can use, there's a link there that you can embed it yes. in, directly into your blog or your website or whatever. So, Yeah. Yeah. Which cool. is what I did on my Capturing Magic yeah. post. I shared yeah. a couple. And one of the things that's really fun about it is that you can get the uh, trademarked and licensed characters. So there's one story background. There's five or six different options that you have for your story background that looks kind of like a scrapbook. Mm-hmm. And one of the options is a Mickey Mouse one that's really fun. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah. I They've hope done a good more. job with it. Yeah, I hope they do too for all different kinds of characters. I think, yeah, like to use more. I mean, I know that the the focus seems to be capturing everyday stories, but I hope there'll be more about capturing like Disney trip stories, yeah. so that there'll be more Disney backgrounds and stuff. But the Mickey one that they have is very cute. It is very cute. I I totally agree with you, Britt. I hope that they'll move that direction as well and get some for every character, just like the Memory HD app has. Yeah so many different characters that you can add. And in my post that I did on capturingmagic.me, the story that has the Mickey Mouse background, I used the Memory HD app and put a photo of myself with a whole bunch of different characters that they have Uh available in that app. And I hope they'll do the same thing with the story app. I agree with you. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's brand new, so hopefully it that's is. where it's going. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was really well done for being brand new. I, so cool and yeah. free. Like, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. A lot of times when Disney comes out with apps, they're not that great the first time out. But this mm-hmm. one, I think really, really, they did a great job with it. So I'm excited to see what, what else they have in store for it, for sure. Yeah. 
Okay, and then the last little bit of memory-making news we have is the new Adventures Outpost opened today in Animal Kingdom at Walt Disney World as we're recording the show today, which is the 15th, 16th today? 15th. 15th, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. It was supposed to open on Sunday because I was going to go, and then they pushed it back. Yeah. So. So they have right now they have Mickey and Minnie in there to do character meets is all but I've heard that that's where they're going to be moving all of the characters to do you know if that's right That's what I've heard because Camp Minnie Mickey is going to be closed going yeah is going to be making way for the avatar avatar thing that we're so no, excited nobody, about Nobody yeah <laughs> I'm going to keep an open mind about it but I know <laughs> but okay so this is it's an indoor place Looks it's like indoor, from which the is pictures. Yeah, it, yeah. It used to be a store, and yeah. oh, okay. It's, yeah, it's, it seems like it took a while because I'd heard several different dates, and then, then it was like I said, I thought I was going to get to check it out, but then they pushed it back during my trip. So, um, I saw pictures. I mean, it looks cute inside. Did you see the pictures from today? Or? I only saw the ones on the Disney Parks blog, but it looks oh, well. Yeah, I, I saw a couple in, on Twitter. Did you? So. Yeah, and so it looks like, like you said, it's, it's well themed, and it's, you know, with Animal Kingdom, it's so hot. So yeah, I can understand the wanting to have indoor meets, you know, even more than other parks. So yeah, it's always a little bit of a struggle to get those get good pictures in those indoor. indoor. Oh yeah, and greets, but and I, and I love. I mean, I've only been to the Camp Mini Mickey, you know, a couple times, but I just loved it down there. I thought it was so cute. So. I'm a little sad. <laughs> I'm very sad yeah, about it. I'm sad too. I and agree. that's usually if they have like some random characters that'll pop out, they usually go. That's one of the areas that they might show up is the Camp Minnie Mickey. So, you know, that's going to start to go away, I guess. So, yeah. It's mm-hmm. sad. But it's, yeah. So, anyway, that's where the characters will be. And they'll probably be move, moving all of them over to the new Adventures Outpost in the Animal Kingdom. It's kind but, of, I'm trying to figure out how to explain to people where it is. It's by the entrance to Asia. Is that right? I, one of I'm the entrances. Exactly to Asia. sure. I, okay. Sorry to put you on the spot <laughs> like, like that, no Heather. <laughs> yeah, Animal Kingdom's like the one, you know, the, the one part that I don't really know that well because I, I did go this the, trip and, you know, but it's, it's not one that I go every time. So. Right. Well, it yeah. It says it's on Discovery Island. Where's it that? It is. Discovery Island's in the middle. Okay. And then everything kind of, it's like the hub almost, you know, in Disneyland. So oh, okay. Okay. I think I get where it's at, sort of. And it looks like the guy who wrote the post on the Disney Parks blog said that this is like one of the only places where Mickey and Minnie are going to meet regularly together as a couple. So that's kind of fun. That is kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, because they used to meet when you went in, when you entered um, Magic Kingdom, but then once they opened the Storybook Circus, they put Minnie in there and so they took her out of the front so yeah yeah it's cool. all really yeah fun it'll be fun to see how things change and progress but that's all of the news that we have quite a bit related to memory making I know that it'll be exciting to see we have a few listeners that are in Paris or at least attend Disneyland Paris a lot go there a lot and so because they've written in and asked me to please do an app for Disneyland Paris <laughs> so it'll be fun to see what they think of photo passes that rolls out over there yeah I didn't even I mean this is how much I know about the parks across the sea but <laughs> I didn't even know they didn't have it there so neither did I Quite honestly. I just assume that they have everything. <laughs> I know. I figured that they had it everywhere. How disappointed I would have been when it came time to go and I couldn't get photo pass, right? Exactly. Oh, yeah. You're going to Paris and then you'd be disappointed. That. <laughs> <laughs> if someone wants to send me there to do any research, you will I will. Dis- <laughs> and you will not be disappointed about anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. So our discussion topic today is that is a character breakfast. We're going to be talking about character breakfast and some tips. And we have our in-house resident character expert, Heather, here (laughs) to share tips with us. And just to remind people how many different unique characters you've, because you log, that's one of the things you log on your site is all of the different characters that you've met and you don't count the same character twice, even if they're in a different outfit. So what number are we at now? Well, I got four new ones this trip. Which I didn't expect. So that wow. I'm up, yeah. So I'm up to 177 now. Every time you say that you've gotten new characters, I'm just I know. surprised. I'm like, I don't know why. 
<laughs> well, this this trip I didn't expect. Usually there's some kind of special event or something that like yeah. my trip was built around. And so I didn't think anything was going to happen. And then just before the limited time magic was the Cinco de Mayo. And so the three caballeros <gasps> were there. So... I, I was really excited about that because yeah. I originally heard it was just going to be on the 5th and my trip started the 6th. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm just going to miss them. But it ended up being for the whole week. So that was the first thing I did. You know, when I got in, I went <laughs> to Epcot. And so I got to meet them. And that was exciting. And they they were so interactive. I, I know this has nothing to do with the character no, you're worlds, fine. but <laughs> it's about characters. <laughs> yeah. And it was the line wasn't that long, but it never moved because. They were so interactive, so but How fun. it was it was really fun. And they signed too, which was uh, strange because they gave out the cards like they've been doing for these yeah. limited time magic with their signature, but they still signed. Oh. So yeah, so that was two new characters, and then I did something else I've never done, which was the Frontierland hoedown, and it's just a cute little thing. And then they have characters, and sometimes you can catch them just before, or just after. So I got a couple pictures there, but the new character was Br'er Rabbit, who I never oh, met. Cool. So, yeah. And then I said before, I don't really do the play school characters, but we did Character Palooza, where we met 15 characters. It was it was insane because in the, in the other podcast about characters, I talked about the whole character yes. lose it, but they yeah. completely changed it. It's not inside anymore, and it's not the set time. And so we kept going. It's either at Echo Lake or the Streets of America, and we had to keep walking back and forth between the two to try to find it. Oh. And then it was like chaos when they come out. You know, everybody like swarms. It was, it was insane, but it was a fun insane. And so we met. I think it was fifteen characters there, and Quincy. From a play school thing. Oh, I don't yeah. know what it's wrong. <laughs> and like, so Disney I, Junior. Yeah, yeah. And so he was, there was no one there. So I met him. So <laughs> so that was a new character. So. Oh, there you go. What show is yeah. that from? Do you know, Brett? It's I don't Little know. Little Einstein. Oh, okay. That, yeah, okay. Quincy. That's an older one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jo- yeah uh, Scarlett loves Little Einstein. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you can ask the toddler mom over here. Yes. Well, that's what <laughs> yeah. I figured. That's what I was counting on. You, I mean, my daughter did watch Little Einstein's a ton, but, and I'm like, I know I recognize that name, but I couldn't yeah. place it. <laughs> I know it's an older, one of the older shows yeah. and stuff, but it, she loves Little Einstein's. Yeah. She calls it Pat Pat. Oh, cute. <laughs> yeah, that totally makes sense. So we're we're kind of out of that Disney Junior mode here. There are some shows that she still likes to watch, like Jake and the Neverland Pirates. Yeah, it's a cute one. Sophia. They just uh, this. Wow, we are really off topic here, but I know. they just took out Little Einsteins and Handy Manny out yeah. of the Disney Junior live show and yeah. put in yeah. Sophia, Sophia and Doc McStuffins. Doc McStuffins, which so we're a little love at our house. Yeah, that's exciting because those are fun shows. We're a little sad to lose Little Einsteins because Scarlett loves it so much, but I understand it's not one of their main shows anymore right. yeah but she will love the new additions because those are also shows she loves so yeah and Sophia is supposed to meet eventually <gasps> yeah I'm really yeah. excited I assumed about that, that would happen so yes. yay I saw that on the Disney Parks blog I think is that she would be meeting soon but I'm dying to know when uh, yeah. I want to take yeah. my daughter so. yeah Scarlett will love that okay back to okay. the topic <laughs> <laughs> We are sharing ideas for character breakfast. So the first question I want to ask is, do you know about how many character breakfasts you've been to, Heather, or have you stopped counting? (laughs) Well, I've done almost all of them that they have at uh, at Disney World, and actually at Disneyland, too. I think I only missed two of them, and I'm going to try to catch the other one this trip. Oh, goodness. this one, I actually did one that I hadn't done before, the Tusker House lunch mm-hmm. we did. So I got another one in there, but I, I'm trying to count because I, I put down the list of all the different characters and, and who's there. So oh, um, Wow. You are so prepared I, for us. Yeah. I, I got prepared this time to make sure I don't <laughs> forget anything. But the, So I did, I've done eight of them at Disney World, but then there's obviously sometimes a breakfast or dinner or lunch. So I don't know how many times I've gone. Yeah. Over the course of that, and then yeah. I did at the three at Disneyland. So. So are you saying you, you've done eight of the character, just character dining in general, or eight breakfasts? Eight character meals. Dining. Okay. So I've I've done breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Some of them are only breakfast. Some of them are only dinner. I don't know if you wanted to go through them or just put it in the show notes or something, but it's because sometimes it's only certain meals 
for different restaurants. For the uh, Tusker House, for example, it's only breakfast and lunch is a character meal. And then for dinner, it's just a regular meal. Okay. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you yeah. want to do a character meal, you have to make sure that you're there for the right thing. So which ones are only like dinner, or lunch or dinner? Because I know most of them are typically breakfast and you might get lucky and they do lunch as well. But I didn't, I guess I wasn't aware that there are some that only do dinner. Well, the most of them do breakfast. And it's usually dinner is the one that's not. Like uh, the Cape May Cafe, that's breakfast only. So then the rest of the meals are non-character. Mm-hmm. And but I th- just doing a quick search, I think most of the other ones are Hollywood and Vine. Their dinner is not a character meal, so that's just breakfast and lunch. Ohana and as well. Ohana, it's just yeah, breakfast, Ohana right? Just, yeah, and that oh. was that's one of the ones I haven't done. The Ohana and Hollywood and Vine are the two really regular main ones that I, I haven't done. Hollywood and Vine is that the as we were just talking about those characters. So yeah, because they're the. Um, the Disney Junior characters that yeah. Hollywood and Vine, which I did that one this last time when we were down there with my daughter because those are a lot of the characters that she's interested in, and it was a lot of fun for her. If I was Heather going without kids, I'm not sure that it would be a priority <laughs> for me either. <laughs> I would have to agree with that one. So Yeah, and, and at Disneyland, the at the Plaza Inn, the Minis breakfast, mm-hmm. that's obviously just a breakfast and then the regular the other meals during the day are, are non-character. And the uh, surf's up at the PCH Grill is the same story and Storyteller's Cafe. So yeah. so at Disneyland, it's, the, most of the character meals are breakfast at Disneyland, which was hard when I was trying to schedule because I wanted to do several, and, that's, and I did three. So when they're mostly breakfast, it's hard to, you know, you're only there for so many days. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Have you done character meals? I guess I should say not character breakfast, Britt. Um, with only char- we've never. This is gonna sound awful, but we've never done a character meal at Disneyland. We've you only done we them at Disney World. See, we I've only done one at Disneyland, and but we've done them a lot at Disney World. And someone asked me that one time. Somebody that's never been to Disney World. She she asked, "Why haven't you ever done a character breakfast at Disneyland?" And I guess what it comes down to for me is that whole immersive experience. For some reason at Disney World, it's easier for me to do the character breakfast because I'm staying on site. It's all totally immersive. And at Disneyland, it's just a different experience yeah, for me. Yeah, it's not as big of a deal. Like, it's, I don't know. It's not, I mean, it's very fun, I'm sure. And I would like to do it. And, now, you know, and I always kind of thought before I had kids, like that I, you know, why would I do it if I didn't have kids? Right. But now that I've done it, because the only, the only reason we did it is because we had free dining. Mm-hmm. And so when we went to Disney world and so we, you know, we booked our meals and all that. And now that I've done it, I'm like, Oh, well they're totally fine. Yeah, they <laughs> so, are. But I think that's one of the other reasons I haven't done them at Disneyland is because it's just an extra expense that we just don't really budget for in a trip. Like we don't really think yeah. about that. It's just not part of our, our planning where at Disney world, it was like the main part. Yeah, of our plan. exactly. It's just a different, it's a different creature. I don't know. They it's, are, they are. Yeah. They are. So maybe we need to talk a little bit. That just made me, reminded me. We should talk a little bit about what a character meal is for people that haven't ever done them before Mm -hmm. so that they can kind of understand and get a sense for what it is. Because I thought the same thing, Britt, too. Why would I go to a character meal without kids? But now that I've done them, I totally would go without my kids. Uh, It was really fun. Yeah, super fun. So typically character meals are buffets, right? Yeah, uh, mostly. There's some that aren't. So yeah. it's the the Cinderella's red table and uh, the the Garden Grill is kind of a they bring all the food to the table, yeah. so it's kind of a, a family style meal right. type of thing. So, but yeah, most of them are are buffets, which makes it easier probably when you're having all the characters around and you don't want to really a sit down kind of thing for that. Yeah. And then the characters take turns rotating in a, and they go in a certain pattern around the restaurant and visit each table so that you can get autographs, get photos, and meet with the characters. And typically there's about four to six characters. Am I right? Yeah, depending on the character meal. That's why it's funny when you're talking about with Disneyland and how you haven't done it as much there. The most characters I've ever met at a character meal was in Disneyland. It's at Minnie's yeah. Breakfast. And they have 
we met, I think it was 12 or 14 <gasps> characters. Wow. It was, in, yeah. And the, I remember the you thing saying is, that last time I was like, yeah. What? <laughs> and at Disneyland, they're, most of their character meals are random. They're not the same group of characters like at, yeah, it's like at Disney random, World. Yeah. Yeah. At Disney World, they're usually themed. So, you know, you'll have like the Fat Five, you have princesses, you have the Pooh characters, you, you know, you have like uh, characters from like the England area, the 1900 Park Fair does that for breakfast. So, but at Disneyland, it's just completely random. It's like Hook <laughs> and it's it's Chip and it's, it's crazy. So you don't really know who you're going to get, but that meal... You got rare characters, you got face characters, everything. So, uh, you know, that, the only that's real, kind of the anomaly, you know, for yeah. The only super-themed one that we have at Disneyland is probably the Ariel's Grotto, right? Like, that's the only one yeah. that is, like, really themed as these are the only – like, it's only princess. Right, <laughs> the yeah. other ones are just sort of, like, whatever. <laughs> the storyteller's breakfast is their critter characters. So right. that's that can that's be true. a little more themed, but mm-hmm. – Still a little bit random. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. From what I've, t- I haven't been to that one, but from what I can tell, from I've seen people's pictures and stuff. So yeah. So what, uh-huh. one of the things that I was going to refer our listeners to is the Disney F- Disney Food Blog has mm-hmm. their ebook. I used it when I went to Disney World to figure out which character meals I wanted to take my daughter to, and she has a great layout of all of the different character meals. And if you have a child that's nervous about characters, which ones are going to be best for you? If you are going as adults, which ones, I mean, just all different kinds of situations. And if your priority is the best food, all of that, all of those different kinds of things. And then she has it laid out of which character meals are the best. So I want to definitely refer our listeners to that because we can't cover every single thing to do with a character meal in this show. I was actually going to mention that same thing on her site. There's a link that is for our character meals and it's, it might be the same. It might be sort of information. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not as in depth, but you can sort it by the character or by the type of food or the price. So that's another uh, research thing that you can look at. Perfect. Yeah, send that link over, and we can include that in the show notes. Yeah. Show. Anytime you're dealing with food, just go to AJ's site. It's- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's fabulous for sure. Especially if you're going to go ahead and spend the money on a, di- on a character meal because they're pricey. Yeah. I mean, especially if you have, a, you know, a few kids to take too, they can get a little expensive. So you want to make sure you're reserving one that you're going to really enjoy and that your kids are going to enjoy. Yeah. And, and it's going to be a good fit for everybody. Yeah. And that they'll eat the food there, and, you know, all that good stuff. So, yeah. Oh, Mickey waffles. Everybody likes Mickey waffles, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing even with the buffets, the, for example, the, Tusker House, I just went to, you know, there's more unusual things, but then they still also have, you know, regular types of food that you know, picky eaters will eat. So if you're going to Disney for a buffet, you generally find food that everyone will eat. Yeah, for sure. So what are, what are some of the things that, why do you like character breakfast? Why do you like, what about them do you like versus just a regular meal and then just meeting characters in the park? Well, with the character meal, you get a whole bunch of characters at once and you don't have to worry about dealing with lines or you know any of those other issues. You'd be in a, a line and then they change out or you have to still wait longer. So this way you're, you know, when you're at Disney, most of the time you don't, you're, you're trying to make the most of your time. Yeah. So this way you're, you're doing two things at once. You're having your meal and then you're also getting to meet characters. And usually with the, the character meals, you know, along with meeting new characters, like meeting characters and other kinds of outfits and everything. And so a lot of the times, especially the Fab Five type of characters, they have different outfits than you would be able to meet them anywhere else. Right. Because they're themed to the location and... Right? Yeah. 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 Like at the... You know, Chef Mickey, they're in chef's outfits. At the, the reason why I went to the Tusker house was they're in safari outfits. And it's different than the ones they wear in the parks. So it's each each meal. Usually the other characters don't have outfit, special outfits, but the, the Mickey, Minnie, you know, the Fab Five, they usually will have outfits that go along with the theme of the restaurant. Which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then also some of the meals have... Before you even sit down, 
they'll have a character out there, and then that one usually will have a photo pass with them. So with Tusker House, Donald was out there, and so you can get that right out of the way. And, you know, I use the photo pass plus this trip, so it's included. So Cinderella's Royal Table is another one, and that's included even if you don't have photo pass plus. You get your picture with that. I'm not sure if that's the only one that does that or not, but... That's another th- thing with that meal. But several of the meals will have that character out there before you even come in. So that's another thing to... I know at 1900 Park Fair, when we did that character breakfast, there was they it was in December. And so they had a Christmas tree set up with a backdrop, uh, a painting of the castle. And it was supposed to be like Cinderella's carriage and stuff. And that picture from that was included on our PhotoPass Plus, but if you don't have PhotoPass Plus, then it's an additional purchase. They Mm -hmm. took several pictures, though, and you can get a print-up. You can choose one pose for your print-up that they give to you. I'll print it up five by sevens. I think two five by sevens and then eight by ten in a special little folder that's included in the PhotoPass Plus, and then all of the digital copies of the other photos come in your digital download or on your CD if that's the way you choose to order your PhotoPass Plus photos. Yeah, and the another meal that does that is the Norway breakfast, or oh, it's every meal, but the, the Norway dining, which it also has all the princesses. Yes. And if you can't get into, you know, the Cinderella's Royal Table, I think that's a great one to go to. I actually like it better than the Cinderella's Royal Table. It's a fun meal. And that, they always have bell. Well, usually it's Belle. You, should, you shouldn't say always because you never know yeah. what the character meal is. Some, someone might not show up, but usually it's Belle and it's in her yellow dress. So it's one of the only places you find that at Disney World. And that's a, I'm not 100% sure if that's included. I remember the last time I went, it wasn't. But I, I sort of remember that they might have added that more recently, that you get it automatically. But... I'm not 100 percent sure. So, yeah. and uh, and then at Disneyland, I know they do that with Goofy that you meet him beforehand, and that's and at Ariel's you meet Ariel, obviously right. before you go in. So, I I believe that that might be it character wise before you go in. There there are a couple that have the backdrop, like you said, but yeah. So, are there any things that you don't like about the character breakfast? Well, sometimes it's harder to get a picture if uh, we talked about this earlier about being alone if you're at a character meal or what happens more often if somebody else goes up to get food and then you're at the table and then the character comes by and it's, you know, what do you do? So that can, that might be one of the the things that sometimes there's a, a character attendant that's in the area that might take your picture or you can find a server or look around and see if another table has a good camera and then usually they'll have a good person to take their picture. So ask somebody, I've had to do that once or twice, say, can you take my picture? Nobody's here. So yeah. Yeah. When I went with my mom to, we went to Cinderella's Royal table when we went and, uh, for breakfast and it was, I, I, this was my second time there. I also went with Josh on our first trip, but we, like when the princesses would come to our table, like my mom would stand up and take a picture and I would take theirs and then I would stand up and my mom would take our pic- my picture. So it's like, I, I, but what I really wanted was me and my mom with the princesses, but it's like, you can't ask someone like seven times to take your picture. <laughs> you know, it's that, that gets a little annoying. So when it was just the two of us, it was hard to like get a group picture of any right. sort. Like it was more just yeah. like you had Individual. to take each other's pictures. Yeah. 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 It's kind and of a bummer that, to me, but Yeah, that that happened with on this last trip and just sometimes there would be a character attendant in the area so we say, Can you take a picture of us? With, yeah. You know, but it's it is kind of the luck of the draw. Sometimes I will never see a character attendant walking around and other times you see a whole bunch of them. So yeah. you know, I think if you're going alone or even if you do definitely want a picture of all of you together, maybe you can find a character attendant early on and Mm. ask them if they will be around maybe when the characters I don't I don't know if that would work but it doesn't hurt to ask it's a good tip yeah it doesn't hurt to ask one of the things that I've done when we've been at character mills is watch figure out what the rotation is or even ask someone I've done that before which direction do they go so then you can watch and see how close they are to your table before you go get your food if you've got someone that's just a couple tables away then you want to sit and wait but if they're several tables away, you probably have enough time to go get food and then come back. 
that's probably the thing that I found to be the most difficult about character breakfast is just making sure that timing it. I found myself sitting and waiting so that I didn't miss anything and being hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. So it's, it is hard to, to figure out even you know, how far away are they going to be? How much interaction are they going to have with another table? I actually just yeah. missed Daisy this trip. Um, I mean, I caught her, but when we, I went out to get the food and then when I came back, I found that she, she was like two tables away and then she had to go all the way back around before she came back. But we did catch her, but <laughs> like, oh, I just missed her, you know, I would have run back sooner. But the, and the other thing though, to, to realize is even if you miss a character and you know, you're going to leave, you tell uh, a server or a character attendant that, you know, we didn't catch this character and they will either bring you over to the character or they'll bring the character over to you. So you, you won't miss anyone. So don't, yeah. don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Make sure that you talk to somebody if somehow you get skipped or missed or whatever, but they're usually really good. I've not ever had a problem of them accidentally skipping us and not hitting us. Yeah. I had, Cause that like, seems stressful to me, like, yeah. um, doing a, the buffet. Cause we did, the, um, the, Oh shoot! Now I'm not gonna remember what it's called. The Pooh and Friends one. What's the Crystal Palace? Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace. Yeah. yeah. And so that was the. So we had done the Royal Table, Cinderella's Royal Table, and then we did that. And so I liked Cinderella's Royal Table in that I didn't have to do the buffet. Like they just brought me my food, and I didn't have to worry about missing anybody. Yeah. Whereas Winnie the Pooh, I was totally worried about. Like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna miss if I go get food now, or you know, like. Yes. Uh, stressed me out. Yes. <laughs> You know, another thing that they usually at the, these kinds of meals, they have a little parade thing that they do with the mm-hmm. characters and, the, and then the kids jump in and they parade. And then a lot of the times they'll go off stage for a little bit as a break. And we had, um, I think it was one of the first trips that we had the meal and it was Chef Mickey and that happened. And every time Mickey was almost at her table, that would happen. And then he would never come back. And so oh. we, it was, it was, we were close to the end of the, that time. And, and so we thought we're not going to meet Mickey and Chef Mickey. So the, thankfully they brought him over just, just before they all left for good. But so that's, that's another thing you always have to deal with that I, I think they're supposed to come right back, but for some reason he just kept skipping our table. Oops. <laughs> Forgetful Mickey, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, what about ter- uh, <clears throat> photos? Do you have a hard time getting photos? Because well, there's no photo pass in there, right? Like, right. right. If you, the only time you would have a photo pass is in before you get the, the beginning. Meal. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the, the biggest tip I have is just step away from the table. Don't sit at the you know, you have your seat and then you have the character come over because then you're going to have your whole table and you have, you know, your dirty dishes and the food and like all that stuff in your picture and you don't really want that. So when the, I see the characters coming, I jump up and so Good tip. take everybody and step as far away from the table as you can. And depending on the meal, it's harder than others. Sometimes those tables are really packed in there. The, um, the, which restaurant, the garden grill, their restaurant is, it rotates. And so you have this very small amount of space between the table and the, the barrier. So we, you don't go over into the living with the land exhibit. So it's, it's harder to get it there. And I had a horrible time getting pictures at that place. But when we were at the Tusker house, when we were able to step up and there was kind of a blank wall behind if you stepped over far enough so that worked out pretty good so it it kind of depends but as long as you can get away from the table and push a chair out of the way and try to do that so it's more about you and the character rather than here's all the food (laughs) that we're eating yeah yeah my tip would definitely be to watch your backgrounds uh, figure out the best angle to take the photo so that you don't have a lot of random people in the background if you can and also your table and your food just like you said it's hard it can be tough it's hard yeah and another thing is if especially if it's like a child try not to sit them against the wall because if the character does come around and you don't step away from the table then it's it's harder for them to get to them you know so sometimes it it is cute to get a picture Uh, we've had sometimes if they bring over a cupcake or something if it's a celebration and then the character might show up with it and then you will be sitting down and the You'll have the character with that. I've had that a couple of times. 
but if you're against the wall, it's, it's, it's just not going to happen, you know. So if, if you can help it, try not to seat yourself or your child against the wall. And it's, that should help with the pictures if a character just kind of randomly pops up. Yeah, it can, it can be tricky. And also a good wide angle lens if you're on an SLR mm -hmm. and can change out your lenses, put your widest angle lens that you have available to you because it's, there's just not a lot of room, like Heather said, to back up and to move away to get the whole character and your kids or whatever you're trying to get in the photo. There's not always a lot of room. There's usually not a lot of room to be able to do all of that. So yeah, what, what other tips for getting good photos? Take some test photos for sure before characters come to your table so that yeah. you can make sure that your settings are good for the lighting in this situation. That goes yeah, for all character <laughs> photos, but yeah. especially especially meal because it goes so fast. Like, you don't have a lot of time to like mess with your settings. Well, we didn't. I don't know. I felt like our character interactions were kind of quick when we did dining, so I had to be a little fast. I felt like. Yeah, it's harder at the character meals. It's that it is more of a negative that you're not going to get as much interaction. We it felt like the characters kind of spend a little more time with us at the Tasker house than I'm used to, but a lot of the times it's just they come, they take the picture you know, and then they're gone. So it's yeah. a, another thing is, you know, when I talking about characters before about getting autographs that you would spend more time with them. So if you, if they sign autographs, you're at least there a little bit longer. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would recommend getting autographs. So they do, they will sign autographs during a yes. character meal. They will sign. And that's yeah. another thing to, it, it goes for any character meeting, but you should definitely have, you know, your camera out, have, your book out, every have it, because otherwise, if they come to the table and you're not ready, you know they they might not know. Maybe they'll move away. You, so just have everything ready to go, and you know. But the yeah, they they do sign autographs, and that's more pictures that you can take more interaction. We had for my daughter when we were at Disney World this last time. I had printed out Brit's uh, character autograph book that we have for free at Capturing Magic it's a free download and Britt designed it. And so I had that printed out and I just printed it out on four by six photos, matte photos. And so we just had a stack of those sitting on the table and the little clipboard and the pen. And my daughter, just every time a character left, she would pick, she would look and see who was coming next and pick what she wanted them to sign on so that it was all ready to go. Fun. Yeah. And it was fun for her to be able to pick which card they were going to sign and all of that yeah. kind of stuff. And it, the character breakfast was, she even had a cast member sign one too that she had had special interaction with. And that was Aww. a lot of fun. It's yeah. fun. That's cute. Yeah. So, okay. So do you have any tips on what we can do to increase that interaction or make it more special, I guess, in character breakfast? Well, the, the best way I think would be getting an early or late seating at the character meals because this way it's not as crowded and so the character will hopefully be able to spend more time at your table. And the, the good thing with the breakfast and if you get the earliest setting you and the restaurant is in a park, you can get into the park before it even opens. Yeah. So you can yeah. get pictures of, you know, Main Street or the castle or, or if it's at a different park, obviously, uh, you know, you, but it's, it's empty and that's always a, a really fun thing. So does that go for uh, Disneyland too? Do you get in or yeah, no. for, Do you? Yeah, you? I tried I, once and they told me no. <laughs> no, yes, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we just did that in, okay. um, for Minnie's breakfast. You did? And yeah, Yay. and it was it was just before. I mean, it wasn't you know that early, but it's and the other thing was it was the same day they had the the candy cane thing. Oh. So we saw all these people running, and what are they running for? And it was for that. But yeah, they yeah. You so you get in there early, and I went and I took pictures, and then I forgot to get closer to the castle because then we just went to breakfast. So I realized that after the fact, but yeah, so that. That happened with us, so. Okay, so t tell us then how you did it at Disneyland. You set up your reservation for the first one in the morning at Minnie's? Yeah, I said the earliest reservations. Obviously, it's easier doing that with Disneyland. Cause <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't yeah, have to do it 180 months. days. Yeah. You can do it like two days before. Yeah. <laughs> and then they... No, the thing is, I guess it doesn't happen that often because we asked several people when we got there which turnstile you go through and then they kept sending us somewhere else but finally we 
got all the way over to the end and it was a turnstile and so yeah and then they just let us in it was I think it, was a, it wasn't too much ahead because of the, the time I think was the same time that the park opened but it was still earlier and still got in and there was nobody there and, and I got to oh. where the hub was and you know was able to take pictures from that with nobody else there so I, I'm not sure about it's, Ariel's is a breakfast so I don't know if it's the same thing at California Adventure if you can get it early or not but Maybe if you can for minis, yeah. it would make sense. It would make sense. Well, that's cool. I, that's that was really like cool. the, one of my. That was my favorite thing about doing Cinderella's Royal Table is getting in early before everyone else and having those pictures of the empty everything. You know, empty yeah. castle, no one in the background. Like those are my favorite character picture or favorite castle pictures of us as that morning. So yeah, we and the did light is for- gorgeous and. We did that for with Crystal Palace. We had the mm-hmm. first reservation of the morning. We're able to get in early, and same thing, empty. A picture of my family in front of the castle. Well, I was taking the picture, so it was a picture of my husband and kids. <laughs> well, I, well, they, ours are photo pass pictures. There was really photo pass. Yep, there yeah. were photo pass people out there both times, both when I went with Josh and with my mom. And we weren't the very first reservation. Uh, we were a little bit later, but we still got in really early. They still let us in. That's great. It was before the park opening, basically. Yeah. Yep. We were in that little early, that en- early entry line, the dining line, yeah. you know. Yeah. And even though our reservation, I, I should know what time it was, but I don't remember. But it wasn't like the very first one. That's, but they still I'm, let us in it. I'm still a little bitter for the cast member that told me that we couldn't get in early. <laughs> pictures <laughs> if we because I made reservations for it and that was the reason I was doing it and I said so what time do we need to be there to get in and she, and she told me just the regular park opening time and I said uh we don't get in a few minutes early for nope sorry I went oh no yeah that's no a, thanks to Heather yes. yeah thank I you I mean that was Heather. a thing nobody knew you know we I forget yeah. how many people we had to keep asking and so it <laughs> just kept sending this over and over and finally it was the very last turnstile which so. seems to be a theme with dining in Disneyland because the yeah <laughs> know, right <laughs> because the world of color meal dining it's the same thing nobody knows nobody knows what time you're supposed to be there and they tell you the wrong time and then you yeah okay <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. get on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> it's just slightly frustrating. Definitely a little different than at Disney World. Yes. For sure. Yes. Where, I mean, and that's the difference is Disneyland. They're used to dealing with annual pass holders that don't do that kind of stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, because the locals don't do that stuff all the time. Like in Disney World where it's people that are on these once in a lifetime trips or, you know, and doing lots of the special stuff. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, okay. but getting in early is for sure one of the best perks of character dining. Yeah. That's really- yeah. I've, I've but that goes for breakfast. all the breakfast reservations, right? Not just character meals. Like if you have a breakfast reservation in the park. Are there other breakfast res- reservations? Besides- I mean, that's the thing. I think most of them are character, character. meals that would be in the park. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they're... I'd have to sit there and think about it, but I don't think <laughs> I they're. Don't, I, I think they're all character, character meals. First time we yeah. so that like, you don't have to book a character meal to get in as long as you have a breakfast reservation. Yeah, but it's like at like Epcot, that, maybe something. Something. Epcot, it's, it's the the Norway breakfast. So we've done that before, and I, I guess at Animal Kingdom you have the Tusker House. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. the Garden Grill is only for dinner, so that's not a breakfast. I know you can get into the World Showcase early if you say, this is completely off topic, but if you're going to the the French Bakery, they have that new French Bakery, which I don't know. I know Britt one hasn't tried it. I don't know if Steph has tried it yet, but it's... It opened right after we left. Yeah. So it is no. so good. It's, it's, it's really good. But if they open before, you know, the World Showcase opens at 11, but they open at 9, so you can... Ooh. Get in there if you if you're going to the bakery. So that's a little tip. Yeah, very nice. It's, it's nothing to do with character breakfast, but yeah. there. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know for sure. Okay, what other tips do you have for character meals? Um, well, the only other um, memory-wise character thing that I would think is to kind of wear something that has to do with the meal, because since most of the as you were saying, like meals are themed character-wise. That, for example, with Crystal Palace, like I would wear a shirt that's kind of poo-related, 
or I'd wear a princess shirt if we're going to the one of the princess meals. And when we did Tusker House, I had a, a shirt that was kind of Animal Kingdom themed. So it's kind of a cute thing, and the characters it will sometimes interact with that. So that's another way to kind of get some interaction. And then for your pictures, is going to work even better also. Yeah. I know somebody, I saw somebody once that, I don't even remember what forum I was in, but she talked about how for their character meal, she'll plan what everyone in her family is wearing <laughs> that day based on the colors that are in the restaurant of the character. <laughs> wow. That yeah. sounds, yeah, that's, that's that even like more than I would do. do. No, that's not, that, that does sound like something I would do. That's, yeah, that's somebody that doesn't have teenagers is what it that's is. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Because my teenagers would not go for that. <laughs> but just on the, but just in general dressing, like I was looking at our pictures from this last trip and like I thought we looked so cute. But now as I'm looking through pictures, I'm like, these don't go with these colors we're wearing go with each other, but they don't go as anything else that we're taking right. pictures by. <laughs> I'm never wearing that shirt again to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kim Lund did a good post, a great post. I think it capturing magic about what colors, how to plan colors and stuff for your Disney trip. So that no matter what anyone's, and she has, she has all teenagers and I thought her tips were great for what to wear so that yeah. any situation that you're, you find yourself in at Disney, you're going to coordinate with each other and not clash with everything else that's going on too. Well, yeah, to that. I don't think anyone I go with would agree to that. <laughs> that. <laughs> so that's, the, the farthest I go is I, you know, if I have a shirt, sometimes it'll be themed to what park we're going to, or like I had a, a Ariel shirt this trip and I said, okay, I have to meet Ariel. <laughs> When I'm wearing the Ariel shirt, yeah. and, and so it's that's that's kind of as far as I go. I don't say we have to all coordinate because, yeah, then no one would go with me. <laughs> yeah, Heather emailing a list to her Twitter friends. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're all wear this now. <laughs> that's how you end up with no friends. That's how you lose friends quickly, right? <laughs> like we're not going with Heather anymore because she she's makes a, us wear whatever she wants. Yeah, she's a little over the top. <laughs> it's bad enough. I say, don't eat. I have to take a picture first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's funny. really funny. So do you have any ways that when you come home, are you doing anything special with all of your character mill photos? Are you scrapbooking them chronologically? Are you scrapbooking them by meals? Or are you just scrapbooking as you feel like it? Well, right now I'm still really in a scrapbook slump, which is awful I don't know why but when I do scrap I normally I since I am so much into characters I would do each character separate and then I also would do for the whole meal in general so it'd be like the food and the restaurant and maybe a picture of the characters or so and so that's that's how I would scrap it but you know other people might just do the whole meals in general yeah do you do two page spreads for the, what the one that's the whole meal yeah, usually because I take a lot of pictures. So, yeah. it's, but then the more you know, the thing is, uh, like with Crystal Palace, it's probably one of my favorites. So we've gone a lot, and it's just you know how many times you can keep meeting those characters, and so it's they don't go as often. But then, so the, the more I go, then the less pictures I would take, and maybe it would get down to a single page layout. But but usually it would probably be a, a double page. Yeah. I like double pages, too, for those kinds of things, mm -hmm. for the meals and everything. I think that's a great idea to make sure that you take some photos of the whole entire restaurant, a wide-angle shot of the whole restaurant, and even if it's a buffet, taking a photo of the buffet, and then some of the details that are inside the restaurants as well, because they oftentimes have some very themed, fun details. Yeah, I usually, when I go out for the buffet and I have my camera because I do take some pictures of the, the food while it's on the buffet. And that's another thing. If you have an early or, or late seating when there's not as many people there, you can get pictures without people getting the food. You know, so it's that when we did uh, Goofy's Kitchen, we actually had the very first. And I didn't realize that when we made the reservation. So, so there was nobody there. And it's also good so you don't have to worry about other Germs. people. But yeah, it's <laughs> <Germs. laughs> I'm a germaphobe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Okay. Um, Did you, if you had any other tips, let's share them. Otherwise we'll move on. Did you have anything else? I'm, good. I'm just trying to think. The only other thing is with, 
uh, with Crystal Palace since they, they recently took uh, Eeyore out of Animal Kingdom. So the only place if you want to meet Piglet or Eeyore, you have to go to Crystal Palace because they're not meeting in the parks at all. So that's that's another thing with the character meals. Sometimes you will meet characters that you can't get anywhere else. And, uh, most of the other ones, it's you can meet them anywhere. But the like the Hollywood and Vine one, I think, is the same thing. I don't think most of those characters meet. And as I said, with the, the mini friends one at Disneyland, it's just all random and and at story of tellers cafe they have a couple of the brother bears characters and they don't meet anywhere else either oh, wow. so yeah the coda and kenny so yeah i used to be able to meet them in the little trail area but now it's rethemed so you don't right. meet them there anymore yeah years ago they used to meet in canada but they don't they don't meet anywhere so well and piglet is so cute that i was so happy to get to meet him at crystal palace like Oh, so cute. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. I wish that he was out with all the other Pooh friends in the... Yeah, they, cause they just keep taking the characters away, and that's another story. But yeah, he because he used to meet at Hollywood Studios a while ago, and then they they slashed them there, and now it's, it's now he's only there. And we were talking about with the Animal Kingdom that they have the... the where they have the Pooh characters, and so they're... They just it was I was actually there like the last day that he was going to be there, Eeyore. So I don't know. Uh, then the only other thing is that the 1900 Park Fair. If you go breakfast and dinner, they're two completely different groups of characters. So in the morning, it's Pooh and Tigger, Mary Poppins, Alice and Mad Hatter, those types of characters. So it's kind of themed in that I guess Victorian English thing and then at night it's for dinner it's cinderella prince charming and the tremaine family and it's usually will come out and they have kind of a little and they introduce them so it's it's a little bit of a show with and they dance and so it's it's a little more than just a, a character meal but it's so if fun. you're yeah so if you want a certain character make sure you know i'll probably send all which characters you can find at each one for the show notes so okay okay know. Yeah, That's so a good idea. Yeah. Instead of going through all of them, but yeah. But they can change. <laughs> yeah, they, they can definitely change. And, and you know, I, I would assume Chef Mickey, Mickey will always be there, but you never know. He might have to go off for cheese or something. So <laughs> don't, don't count on it. But <laughs> you never know, but yeah. The only other tip I could think of is one that AJ actually mentioned when she was on, on our show a while back. But just to be really conscious of, like, windows and where your windows are and use them to, to, you know, the best that you can. Like when we were at, um, Cinderella's Royal Table, we were seated right next to a window. So we always made sure to kind of like move so that we weren't taking our picture with the window in the background. Otherwise it would have been really blown out and, you know, we would have been more like silhouettes. So, but when we turned and used that natural light, our pictures were great, really, really good. So if you can pay attention to where your windows are and use that natural light to your advantage, then you'll have better photos that way. That's great. I was just going to mention that character meals are a great compromise. If you have somebody in your family that doesn't love to meet characters or Mm. wait in line to meet characters, because it is a way to be able to meet a lot of them at one time. And that person that isn't as excited about characters can take pictures of everybody else. Yeah. So it's a way to get a lot done in a, in a short amount of time while having something else to do as well. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Okay. Let's do our picks with pixie dust. Britt, do you have one? I do. Um, it doesn't really have to do with our topic, but um, I think a while ago we talked on the show about the Travel Channel had some like Disney specials that you could watch. Did we talk about that? Uh, yeah, we did. And well, okay. So I just found out that a whole bunch of them are on Netflix, oh. like the instant, the stream, instant, you know, yeah. streaming ones. And so I watched um, one that was called Disney Parks Undiscovered. And it was cool. It was like, it was a lot of stuff I kind of already knew, but there was some things that I hadn't heard about before, like like kind of unusual things you can do at Disney that aren't the typical park things. Um, Most of them are like things you have to pay for, but it was interesting. And then the other ones I had seen before on the Travel Channel, so I didn't rewatch those. But um, if you just search for Disney parks, I think they'll come up that way. So they're good. If you have Netflix, you can watch them 
instant for free or, you know, I felt like there were a good way, like if you had a Disney trip coming up to kind of get excited. I know we've talked about before, like doing one thing each day, Disney before you're, you know, to count down your trip, that would might be a good thing to use for a couple of the days or something. So yeah, they're fun. If you can't catch them on the travel channel or something, you can watch them on Netflix. Perfect. What kinds of things did they have for Disney? I'm curious. Oh, uh, well, the one I watched was Disney World undiscovered they okay. didn't have to the, I didn't I don't actually don't know if they have any of them that are Disneyland okay, they could sorry, I, I wasn't understood no that's okay I said I just said Disney parks undiscovered but it was Disney World um I don't know if they had any Disneyland ones on there but this one it was like um learning how to surf at the the wave pool at what's it called Typhoon Lagoon. You can like go in early in the morning and you can do surf lessons. It's pretty cool. Um, what else was there? No, I'm not going to remember. You put me on the spot here. Okay. <laughs> I know I've seen that. I've seen yeah. that show and I can't remember any of them either. They're super every, fun. Every though. time they come on, you know, you can't turn it off. So I know. It. Even if it's so old and they haven't, you know, they usually don't update them. There was, yeah. I think it was station just recently, some random station that I didn't even realize we had. Just before my trip, they had a week and they were showing those types of shows and, um, I, yeah, but I don't, I can't remember what else was in that particular show either, but they okay. had updated a lot of them. And cause I remember they, yeah. they had a whole thing about Cars Land and World of Color and, oh, cool. and one of the Disneyland ones. Yeah. Well, the one, I just looked them up real quick and there is a Disneyland one. It's called Disneyland Resort Behind the Scenes. And we have watched that. It says it's from 2010, but I think that's the one you're talking about is what they, they, they updated it. Cause I think we did see an updated version on the travel channel. I'm not sure if the Netflix one is updated or not. Okay. Um, and then the other one is ultimate Walt Disney world. And then Walt Disney world behind the scenes animals, Disney's animal kingdom, and then the cruise line one. So those are all on Netflix. So it's fun. There's a lot of cool things in the undiscovered stuff, like just like maybe lesser known attractions or just things that like you might miss. I don't know. It was good. Very fun. Yeah. I love watching those, but it always makes me really want to go on a trip. Yes. <laughs> that is they, like the whole time I was watching, I'm just like, oh man, I want to go so bad. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Okay, my pick is an Etsy store, and I'm trying to get to the name. It's called the Art Beat Gallery, and it's yay. Yeah, Britt actually introduced me <laughs> to these gals, the Snowburn Sisters, and well, it's one of them snow and one of them's burn, and uh, they have a store at Etsy where they have their artwork, and there's a lot of artwork that's Disney related, and I ordered one of their pieces. The piece that I ordered is the snoots, and it just makes me so happy <laughs> yeah. because it's a very susical looking older couple, and they've it's their silhouettes um, painted. So it's not just like the black silhouettes, but it's it reminds me of the silhouettes that you can get at Disneyland. And the older gentleman has Mickey ears on, which makes me so happy because they look very snooty, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I it's just, cute. I look at it and I just, yeah, it makes me happy. And so I bought it to put in my office when it, she showed them on Instagram, Effie Snow did. And I just fell in love with the, this couple. And so then when they launched their Etsy store, I was really excited to see this couple in there. So, uh, super fun. And it was only $30 and it's a limited edition. So I would recommend checking it out and we'll link up to their gallery where they have just tons of stuff on Etsy. So really fun 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 and, and Effie's gonna tell be on what the you show can, yeah and tell them what it came with yes okay because I was their first customer and so yeah they did a Effie did a custom piece for me that was me a, a drawing yeah, a caricature. of me a, yeah, cool. a caricature drawing of it's me it's so cute you guys <laughs> I saw it on Instagram and I was dying and I totally knew it was you when yeah. I saw it I was like yeah. oh, that's you <laughs> yeah my kids it was really funny because my kids I was like look at look at what this person sent to me I was her first order and so she did this for me and they were like that's you mom that's you <laughs> So yeah, she has a little bag down by her feet with her camera on the ground and mm -hmm. yeah, she, it, it looks like me and, and she's just 
kind of nervous and excited. And ex- really, they captured how I feel about my whole new venture on capturing magic. It's adorable. <laughs> that's what I told her. I was like, that's exactly how I feel. You portrayed it very well. So, yeah, super fun. Uh, yeah, check them out for sure. I love following them on Instagram, too. I was too. just going to say, your pic should also be partly <laughs> should to be. follow them. Yes. Because <laughs> they're so – they. It's what Effie just posts the most awesome pictures. Beautiful, pictures. beautiful photos. And the official Disneyland Instagram uses her yeah. photos quite a bit, actually. Yeah. And featured her artwork and stuff, too. Yes, they featured her artwork. Yeah. It's, we love Effie. Yes. Really t- super talented. She's going to be on the show this summer. You know, I'm excited. I'm really excited. We just got her booked. So, yeah, I'm excited. Okay, I think that's it. Did we all do a pick? We did. Nope, Heather didn't do a Heather pick. Didn't I didn't do a pick. Heather <laughs> do a pick. I got out of order. The guest goes in the middle. I got out of order. Darn it. Okay, go ahead. It's funny because I didn't really have one, so then I just went searching on my phone to find something I used during my trip. Oh, good. So, um... I don't know if it's been mentioned before, but Square Ready, which is a yeah. an app that you can – you know with Instagram, is one of the things I don't like about it is that it has to be a square. And so sometimes, you know, you compose a picture and it's not – it doesn't look best in a square. So you're able to make it however shape you want, you know, rectangle-wise. And I use that for – the really exciting Rapunzel bathrooms that yeah. <laughs> only only a Disney fan would understand why I'd be so excited <laughs> to see bathrooms. But it's you the um, Rapunzel's Tower. So that's one of the times I use it this trip. And otherwise, you know, it would all be cut off. So I, I, And I've done that several times for Disney. Yeah, I like Disney that app a lot. So, yeah. I've used that all the time. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah, I, one of you. I got that app from one of you. I've used that as well. It's a great yeah. one. It makes it super easy to get a rectangle on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can send it right through to Instagram from there. So yes. it's good. Yeah. It's really easy. So yep. yes, perfect. Easy is good. Yeah. Easy is good. Yeah. Great pick. Thank you. And so free much. is good because it's free too. It so. is. Oh, yeah. Free. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go around one more time and remind our listeners where they can find us. Britt. I am at BritishDesigns.com, and that's where you'll find my digital scrapbook site, my blog, and all that good stuff. So, Perfect. Trying to think. By the time this comes out, uh, I don't know what's going you on. You had a new kit that you released, right? Oh, well, over – it's just it's like the – like a week ago or so. It was just what was in my grab bag from – NS from National Scrapbooking Day. Okay. It was I just put it all in the shop individually. But by the time the show comes out, we'll be almost ready to launch some new Project Mouse stuff. So perfect. Yay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> perfect. okay, Heather. Um, I'm at heatherw.com character, which is my character site, and it probably will be a while before I get updated from this trip because I mentioned that I met four new characters, but this ended up being a crazy character trip we met 103 characters over we met 65 different characters but what? over it's 100 yeah it was we, we were saying we might have a, a podcast yes. about this with my friend because it was, it was crazy we didn't really set out to do that but it it ended up like we went to the princess room four times and wow. yeah it was so it, it was got a little insane so it probably will take a while for me to update my site with with all that new information, but that's eventually so. But right now you can see all the characters I've met in different costumes and, and everything, including the Disneyland. So, and on Twitter and Instagram, I'm Heather W 25. So I put, especially during the trip, I post a lot of pictures and then afterwards, I'm sure I'll, I still have ones on my phone. I haven't posted. So eventually they'll be posted. And, and you're writing at capturingmagic.me. Oh yeah, of course. That's great. <laughs> Great blog. I don't know if you heard of it, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Yeah. Okay. uh, Let's see. I'm Steph, and you can find me at capturingmagic.me as well as thedailydigi.com. And we are should be submitting an update on the iPhone apps, the Capturing Magic iPhone apps, in the next day or two. My developer is going to get me a beta today or tomorrow. I'm really excited to check it out and see everything that we've been able to do and have it all in action. I'm nervous about saying anything though about what's been integrated in case it doesn't work and then we have to take it out. So yeah, we'll talk about it when it's yeah. working in, in this, in, this in the store app. and everyone can go download the up there. Yeah. Download the 
update. Update. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. So let's see. That's You can find me at thedailydigi.com where we have digital scrapbooking information and we have the digi files where you can get over $50 worth of digital scrapbook supplies for $7.50 a month. And that's all. Okay. Hey. Let's see. We do want to remind our listeners to make sure to leave us comments or, qu- or questions on the site. So you can find notes for this podcast at capturingmagic.me in the podcast section. And if you have questions or comments that you would prefer to email, you can mail them to us at mail. Well, email them to us. Don't snail mail them to us. <laughs> you can email right. us at <laughs> this address. Yeah, self address. No, Stamped envelope. <laughs> Yeah, you can email them to mail at capturingmagic.me, and that will come to both Britt and I automatically, and we'll both be able to read it and respond back. We also have a way for you to leave us a voicemail now on capturingmagic.me. There's a tab Yay. there. Yeah, and you can just click on it, and you it's you get best sound if you use some kind of a USB headset plugged in. If not, just any headset would work, and I even tested it out with no headset at all, and it the audio turned out quite well. I was very impressed with it, much better than anything else I've tried before. So it's really good. So leave us a voicemail with your questions. We'll play it on a podcast or your tips and suggestions, and we'll play it on a mini me. That's it. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And we will be back here next time where we will be capturing magic. Mm-hmm.